What is up you guys? So in this one, we'll be talking about discrete time complex exponentials. How do we define it? What is a relative frequency? And what differentiates a discrete time complex exponential from the continuous time case? We will see that unlike the continuous time case, in the discrete case, we have a finite amount of harmonics. So in the continuous time, we had an infinite number of harmonics because they're all essentially distinct. However, in the discrete time case, once the relative frequency is a rational number and hence my exponentials are periodic, then we have a distinct number of harmonics. We'll see how those harmonics are used to define the Fourier series expansion in the discrete time case. And finally, we'll be giving an example on how a generic table could be used to generate all harmonics of interest. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, just like we defined a complex exponential for the continuous time, we're going to do the same thing for in discrete time. So we're going to define a signal that is S K of N, which is the exponential J two pi K F, 0 of n and this signal is a frequency f0 right now we said that in previous lectures when we talked about the discrete cosine signal or discrete sinusoids that the sinusoidal signal is periodic if and only if its relative frequency is a rational number and since the complex exponential is written in algebraic form as cosine 2 pi k f 0 n plus j sine the same quantity that is 2 pi k f 0 n then the same argument applies to the discrete time complex exponential that is s k f n is periodic if and only if f 0 is rational right now you can pick any rational number okay but for our discussion, we're going to pick an F0 of 1 over uppercase N, right? So what do we observe over here? Now, let's express the kth harmonic, right? So again, we're going to refer to this thing, to this complex exponential as the kth harmonic for the same reason as in the previous lecture. So in contrast to the continuous time case, we have a really important observation over here. It is that since S K of N expressed as a function of uppercase N, that is E J to pi K N over superscript N, we can say that S K plus N. So if we're taking a look at the K plus Nth harmonic, that is, we are replacing our K by K plus N right then expanding this exponent we have ej 2 pi n times sk of n okay now what can we say about ej 2 pi n this guy is a one right because it's cosine 2 pi n plus j sine 2 pi n we know that cosine 2 pi n is, is always one and sine 2 pi n is always zero so this guy is a one and hence we get sk of n so what can we say can say that sk of n is always equal to sk plus uppercase n of n, right? Now what does that actually mean? It means that we only have n distinct harmonics, okay? Also, all members of the set have a common period of n samples. Now clearly we can choose any consecutive n complex exponentials from Let's say I can pick any K, let's say N0, and I can go all the way to, you know, the same number plus N minus one, right? So if I am on the integer axis, this is N0, this guy is N0 plus one, I can go all the way, if this is my N0 plus uppercase N, and this is my N0 plus N minus one, right? So in this part, I can guarantee that I have N distinct complex exponentials or harmonics, right? Now over here, all those harmonics have 
a fundamental frequency that is clearly 1 over n. So it's all based on this choice. It is because I wrote the kth harmonic with frequency or relative frequency 1 over n. So this guy is the relative frequency. I didn't mention that. I'm mentioning it. I'm mentioning it here. So this guy is the relative frequency and the total frequency is k of zero. Oh, we're focusing on the relative frequency that is only f zero. That is common for all complex discrete time exponentials. Now, for convenience, we're going to pick n zero is zero. And throughout this course, we're going to refer to the harmonics from zero till n minus one a lot. And why is that? It's because, again, since all have the same period, that is 1 over F0, then we're going to combine them as we did in the previous lecture. So starting from K equals 0, I have the signal S0 of N of possible period uppercase N, K equal 1. I've got the signal S1 of N with possible period N down to the n minus one harmonic with possible period n. Combining all those signals by a linear combination, calling it xn, that is a weighted sum of all my harmonics, ck, sk of n. This then has period or fundamental period n, right? And as we will see in future lectures, this is actually referred to as discrete time Fourier series of x of n, right? And in particular, we'll see in future lectures how we can grab any periodic discrete time signal x of n and decompose it into such a sum where our main objective is to find the CKs, okay? Just bear in mind that as k of n is referred to as the kth harmonic of the signal x of n and actually of any periodic signal x of n okay now there's something really interesting about this discrete time harmonic we can actually instead of generating our kth harmonic using direct computation we can have a table that stores values of, let's say, XN, or let me call it something else because XN is reserved for periodic signals of fundamental frequencies N in this case. So to avoid confusion, I'm going to call it, say, YN. So let's say my YN is simply EJ 2 pi N over N. So no K included, right? Um, so in that case, we've got a real part and an imaginary part. Well, imagine I've got a 2D table, right? that has 2D, one for real and one for imaginary, that stores Y1, Y2, down to Y9, okay? And I'm interested in, without recomputing kth harmonics, I want to make use of this table to generate discrete time exponential harmonics, okay? So the trick here is that, observe that this exponential could be written as e j 2 pi k so i multiply and divide by k in the numerator as such which means that my y n is actually s k n over k where n over k this is super important my n over k this ratio should be an integer okay this guy should be an integer because discrete signals are defined, discrete time signals are defined for integer arguments. So why do I care about this? It's because my YN could be used to generate my harmonics. So S1, in the particular case of S1, so my first harmonic is actually all the values over here, right? So it's actually S1 of one, S1 of two, this is all equal, S1 of three, S1 of 9. Now here we're assuming that n, uppercase n, is strictly greater than 9. So all this applies for n, greater, uppercase n is greater than 9, okay? If it was lower than 9, if it, were, if it were lower than 9, then we've got repetition over here for the first harmonic, right? Now, okay, that's good. We can use this table to generate my first complex exponential harmonics, right? 
Now what about the second harmonics? So we start for S2, it is n over 2 that is equal to y of n, right? So 1 over 2 is not defined, so I cannot use y of 1. However, y of 2 is defined, so I can use it to generate my S2 of 1, right? 3 over 2, not an integer, so I'll jump. 4 over 2 is an integer, so that's my S2 of 2 and so on. So y6 is my s2 of 3, y8 is my s2 of 4. Likewise, my third harmonic is, so I'll start my k here is 3, third harmonic, so n over 3 should be an integer. 1 over 3 is not an integer, 2 over 3 is not an integer, but 3 over 3 is my s3 of 1. Again, so all multiples of 3, that is 6, is my s3 of 2, 9 is my s3 of 3, and so on. So a table of complex exponentials it suffices to generate different harmonics, okay? So that's about it. That's all I have to say for this lecture on discrete time complex exponentials. So we defined what a discrete time complex exponential is, characterize it through its frequency and absolute frequencies. And unlike the continuous time case, we saw that the discrete time case has a finite number of harmonics. So it's all dependent on the denominator of your rational frequency. So if my rational frequency is written as one over n, then I only have n distinct harmonics as zero down to s n minus one, okay? And this turns out to be useful to write down the Fourier series expansion of any discrete time periodic signal xn, because if, let's say, my xn has a fundamental period n equal three, then I choose my n over here to be three. Thus, I have harmonics going from s0 to s2, so s0, s1, s2, and those will be used as my bases for the Fourier series expansion, which we will be talking about extensively in future lectures. We gave an example on a case where I have a table of exponentials of this form, no k, right? ej2 pi n over uppercase n. And we saw that this table suffices to generate all my harmonics, okay? So thanks for watching. If you found this lecture beneficial, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions whatsoever, kindly leave your question down in the comment section below. I'll make sure I'll get to it as soon as possible. Also consider donating to my Patreon account any amount you wish. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in future lectures.